morning Phoenix class. Today in Mass we are going to be doing more on pie charts. We're going to read and interpret charts. So first of all a little bit of a reminder from yesterday. Remember that a pie chart allows you to compare the parts with the whole. So every sector of the pie chart is a proportion of the whole amount. So first of all, there's a bit of a recap for you to do. How many questions can you write about these two sets of data? For example, you could have how many more children walk to school than go on their bike. So our first problem of today, how can you represent the children at the fancy dress party with a pie chart. So the first thing I want to know is how many different types of fancy dress are there? Now, if we have a look at the picture, we can see that we have one princess. So I'm gonna make a tally as I go along in the tally box. I've got three cats at the back. I've got three pirates. And then down at the front here, I've got one, two, three, four, five different superheroes. So how many children are there at the party? Well, there are 12 children at the party and there are four different categories, four different types of fancy dress. So if there are 12 children at the party, that means we want to split our pie chart into 12 segments. So now we're going to have to try to complete our pie chart. So I'm going to want to change to a highlighter and let's have a think about, the, let's do it as green first of all. So the first ones I'm gonna mark on is I'm gonna mark on my superheroes. So I'm going to do my superheroes in green. So I'm going to do a little key there so I know what colour represents what category. So there are five superheroes. So that means I'm going to want to colour in five pieces of my pie chart. Now, obviously, you would be able to do this much neater because you're not trying to do it on the board. So each of these segments represents one child, one superhero. So we've got five superheroes in total. So therefore, we have to colour in five segments in this case. Now, the segments can represent more than one child. But in this case, they've helped us by splitting our pie chart into 12. OK, nearly there. OK, we now can see that we have five superheroes marked on our pie chart. So the next one is princesses. So let me change colour. Let's do the princess yellow. So again, I'm going to mark on so that I can see for my key what colour my princess is going to be. Now, there's only one princess. So how many sections do you think I need to colour in? Yeah, we only need to colour in one section because there is only one princess. OK, what about cats? We've got three cats. So again, I'm going to change colour. Let's make the cats purple. Marking on my key. That bit's really important. Otherwise, how am I going to know what each colour on the pie chart represents? So how many cats are there? There are three cats. So that means I'm going to want to colour in three of the segments. Nearly there. 
Okay, so then last but not least, let's change color again because we still have our pirates to add on. And we're going to make our pirates blue. Of course, I could have left them white. Now, how many pirates do I have? According to my tally chart, I've got three pirates. And that's handy because I've got three segments left. So I'm just going to color in all of my pirates in blue. Oops. Obviously, you're going to do this much neater than me. Now, what you quite often see on pie charts is you see the names of the segments round the outside as well. Um, and that can help you understand as well as doing a key. So there we have it. There's our pie chart representing all the children at the party. So as you can see here again, we've got our tally chart that's completed. We've divided it into 12 segments. Can you remember why we divided it, in, divided it into 12? We divided it into 12 because there are 12 children. And then each segment in this case represents one child. So here's our next challenge. One superhero, one cat and two pirates leave early. What would the pie chart look like now? OK, so we're going to cross out one of our superheroes. Let's get rid of that one. And we've lost a cat. She's going to have gone home. And we've lost two pirates. So get rid of those two. Now let's complete our tally chart. So how many superheroes have we got left now? We've got one, two, three, four. We've still got our one princess. We've now only got two cats and we've now only got one pirate. So how many children do we have all together? We've got eight children now. So we have split our pie chart into eight sections. Let's have a look and see what our pie chart would look like this time. So I think we used green, didn't we, for the superheroes? Let's oh, let's change that to a highlighter. Oh, that's blue. Didn't want that. Out. And let's try again. So we want a highlighter and we want green. So how many superheroes have we got now? We've got four. So therefore, we need to colour in four of our pie chart pieces. And I'm not going to do that very well because I want to get on and colour in the rest. Obviously, when you're doing it, you would colour it in beautifully and not go over the edges. But I've done enough to show you that we have now four pirate, uh, four superheroes. How many princesses do we have? Well, we still only have one princess, don't we? She was yellow, I think. So this time, as before, we are going to colour in one section because we have one princess. Right. I think the cats were purple. It doesn't really matter. As long as I write a new key, it doesn't matter if I use a different colour. So the cats, we now only have two cats. So there we are. We're going to colour those in purple. And finally, we've got our pirates. And I'm pretty sure our pirate was, no, it wasn't green, was it? It was blue. And now we only have one pirate, so we colour in the last section blue. So that is what our new pie chart would be looking like. So as you can see here, we've got half of the children now are superheroes. We've still got our one princess. A quarter are cats. 
and one section is pirates. Now, it says here that this little boy notices that the section for the cat's costume is the same on both the pie charts. I wonder why. Well, out of the first pie chart, that was split into 12 because there were 12 children and three of them were cats. So as a fraction, we can say that that's three twelfths and that is equal to one quarter. On this pie chart, there are two out of eight that are cats. So there's eight children in total and two of them are cats. So we can write that as a fraction of two eighths. And when we simplify two eighths, of course, that is the same as one quarter. But actually, because we're using a pie chart, it's really easy to see that it is one quarter of the whole in both cases. OK, let's have a look at this question. Some children have voted for their favourite party games. Each segment represents one child. So we've got boys there and we've got some that like singing, musical statues and dance competition. And then we've got the girls pie chart. And again, we've got singing, musical statues and dance. Look at the information in the pie charts then read the statements below. Do you agree with the statements? So the first statement is singing is more popular amongst boys than girls. The next statement is the same number of boys and girls like musical statues. Well, let's see if that's right. Let's look at the singing first of all. Well, first of all, how many children have we got? Well, we've got 12 boys and we've got 20 girls. But how many of them actually like to do singing? All we need to do is count the segments. So we've got one, two, three, four. So we've got four boys that like to do singing. How many girls like to do singing? One, two, three, four. So four girls like to do singing. So the statement was singing is more popular amongst boys than girls. Mm. No, four of each like it. The next part of the statement says the same number of boys and girls like musical statues. Well, let's have a count. So how many boys like musical statues? We've got one two, three boys like musical statues. And what about our girls? One, two, three, four, five. So again, is that statement true? The same number of boys and girls like musical statues? No, more girls like musical statues than boys. OK, let's have a look at this one. Before a party, some children voted for their favourite type of music. At the party, four more children voted. What did these children vote for? OK, so let's have a think about what our first pie chart is showing us. It's showing us that we've got pop, rock and rap. So how many children like pop? One, two, three, four. All I've done is count segments. Four children like pop. How many like rap music? Let's count the segments again. One, two, three. So that's three children. And then two children preferred rock music. Now at the party, when the four extra children came and voted, let's see how many we've got in each section now. So let's have a look at pop music, the blue, first of all. One, two, three, four. Still four children. Can you tell me why there are more segments in this second pie chart than there are in the first? 
I hope you've shouted at the computer and I hope you've said that it's because there are more children. So in this case, every segment represents a child. How many children now vote for rap music? Let's give them a count. One, two, three, four, five. So five children vote for rap music at the party. How many voted for rap music first, before the party? That was three, wasn't it? So two of the new children must have voted for rap. Because the difference between five and three is two. Let's have a look at the rock. How many children at the party voted for rock? We've got one, two, three, four. So we've got four children voted to, for rock at the party. How many children had voted for rock before the party? Only two. So that means that the difference, four take away two, so it means that two of the new children must have voted for rock music. OK, let's have a look at the practice book. So question one, complete the pie charts to represent the information. So on A, the class, children in a class investigated various, oh, children in the class investigated favourite smoothie flavours. Crumbs, I stumbled over that one, didn't I? So let's have a look. We have three types of flavour and we've got how many have voted in each one well banana we can see from the tally chart that is five kiwi is one and strawberry is four so the total number of people that voted is 10. Let's have a look and see how many sections our pie chart has been split into. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we know that one section represents one vote. So we're going to have to have a key here. So I'm going to change back to my highlighter. So let's make uh, bananas blue. So how many bananas were there voted for? How many people voted for bananas? There were five. So we're going to want to colour in five segments in blue. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So obviously you would colour that in properly. Now let's change colour again. Shall we make kiwi fruit green? How many children voted for kiwi fruit? Only one. We've already worked out that one segment means one vote. So therefore, I've just got one segment in green. And then finally, we've got our strawberries. How many children voted for strawberries? Four. So we're going to need four segments colored in our strawberry color. Have a look at B. This chart shows that the children shows the children's favourites ice cream flavours. So what have we got here? Let's change back to a pen first of all. We have two children that liked orange. We're going to forget about the coffee because no children voted for coffee at all. We've got two children that voted for lemon. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six children who voted for chocolate. So how many children voted all together? So six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's see how many sections our pie chart has been split into. One, two, three, four, five. Mm, not ten. So it's in five sections. So how many votes does each section need to represent? We've got 10 votes in total, 10 children. 
We've only got five sections. 10 divided by five equals two. So every section represents two children. Let's get my highlighter. Uh, let's go blue. Oh, I need to remember to put it on a highlighter, don't I? Okay. So the ones who voted for orange, I'm going to do in blue. Two children voted for orange. And remember, each section represents two children. So how many sections am I going to have to colour in? I'm just going to colour in one section because each section equals two children. I'd better do the lemon yellow, hadn't I? That would be sensible. So again, there were two children who voted for lemon. Remember, each section represents two children. So it would be one section that we would colour in yellow. Okay, a sort of black, isn't it? So chocolate had six votes. If each section represents two children or two votes, how many sections are we going to need to complete? Well, six divided by two is three. So I'm going to have that section, this section, and this section all coloured in. Okay, let's change back to a pen. And read part C. 18 people were asked what pets they owned. Three more people had dogs than rabbits and the rest had cats. And we can see on our part, pie chart, first of all, that it has been split into six sections. So one section equals how many pets? How do you think we are going to work that out? The total is 18 pets. So we're going to do 18 divided by 6. And you all know that that is 3. So every section is worth three pets. So two sections were dogs. So how many dogs are there in total if every section is worth three? There are six dogs. The question says three more people had dogs than rabbits. So if six people had dogs, how many people had rabbits? If three more people had dogs than rabbits, six take away three is three. And then the rest had cats. So how many sections are you color going to color in for rabbits if one section equals three pets or three people? Let's have a look at question two. The pie chart shows the games that each team has won, lost and draw. They receive three points for each win and one point for a draw. How many points does the best team have? How many more points does the best team have than the worst? Well, the first thing is you're going to have to work out how many points each team has won. So this time we can take it that every segment is worth a win, a draw or a loss. So let me do Borough Town with you first of all. We've got one, two, three, four, five wins. So how much, how many points was a win worth? It was worth three, isn't it? So five times three, that equals 15. 
And then we get one point for all our draws. So how many draws have there been for Borough Town? One, two, three, four, five. You don't get any points for a loss. So we're going to do five times one for our draws, which is five. So their total is 20. So that's what you're going to do for Rovers and County United. What is their total amount of points? Then look back at the question. How many more points does the best team have from the worst? So you're going to find the difference. You're going to do a takeaway. So in B, Eagle United have won 16 points. Complete the pie chart to show three possible sets of results. They receive three points for a win and one point for a draw. So it could be that they've got four wins and then work out. So four would be three, six, nine, 12. So that would the wins would give you 12 points. So 16 take away 12, that means they would need four draws. What about if they got five wins? How many draws would they need? And then I will let you decide on your last ones. Let's have a quick look at question three. 800 people were asked if they played video games. Complete and label the pie chart to show what they said. So 200 people play once a week, 150 people play every day, 200 people play sometimes, 250 people never play. Now let's have a look at our pie chart. It's got some segments marked on there. You're obviously not going to split your pie graph into 800 segments. You would be there until Christmas. It would be such a big circle, very difficult to do. So we're going to have to find a better way of splitting it up. Now they've suggested splitting each segment, each, sorry, they have suggested splitting our pie chart into eight segments. So what would each segment then represent? How many people would it represent? If we do 800, divided by our eight segments, we know that each segment equals 100 people. So if 200 people play once a week, that's going to be two segments. And remember, it asks you to label it carefully. But 150 people play every day. So if one section is 100, we're going to need, I need to change my pen colour, so it's in blue, we're going to need one and a half segments. So there you are. And again, you can label that and you can finish that one off. There's need more practice questions there. And of course, we've got some challenges there. Do one or the other, please. And then finally, you've got your reflection. Good luck today. Have fun. Make sure you read the questions carefully.